welcome to the Recover You podcast with Kyleen and Patrick Terhune. It's here that we talk about sex addiction, betrayal trauma, mental, emotional, and physical health, faith, and anything and everything needed to recover you to your most authentic self that God created you to be. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Kyleen. So today, I'm so excited. We're going to talk about the idea of forgiveness. And I actually, actually, as we're sitting here talking about, you know, what we want to include and what to talk about and that sort of thing, this might be an ongoing conversation because I think this is a big thing that. So you mean (laughs) we'll never end this podcast? (laughs) I don't know that we can encompass everything there is to talk about the idea of forgiveness in one episode. We may have to revisit it at some point. No, that's fine. Um, But, uh, But I think it's an important topic because when you are in a situation where, you know, as the betrayer, you've done something wrong and as the betrayed, you have had something wrong done to you. The idea of forgiveness often comes up. And anytime you are working with coaches or therapists or practitioners, you're going through programs that help you improve yourself and grow personally and if you're if you're going through any sort of reconciliation at some point someone is going to tell you well you need to forgive the person that has hurt you or you know if you're the betrayer someone you know in in your recovery groups is going to say well you need to ask for forgiveness right Mm -hmm. and so at some point if it hasn't already this is going to come up in your life and it's a really touchy topic in some ways because of all of the different interpretations that people have around this word. I've even had conversations this week with some of my clients or or one of my clients that um, there were some assumptions made around the idea of forgiveness that are, are, do not have to be involved with the process. Right. And so uh, some of those might be like, well, if I, if I forgive this person, then that means I have to be in a relationship with them or I have to, reconcile or I have to be, you know, nice to this person again, you know, this person who maybe is actively still hurting me, right? Or Mm -hmm. even just the idea that, well, I have to forgive. It's a thing I have to do whether I want to or not. And um, I have to do it even if, and I have to offer it to someone, even if they are still hurting me. And that's, I want to talk about all of that because there are different types of forgiveness Mm -hmm. and they are both it's both very it's very important to do both in the appropriate time and sometimes you only do one type of forgiveness mm-hmm. and and that can be really important too so um one of the things i think that is very harmful is in the religious community or the christian community there is such a focus placed on reconciliation and forgiveness that often the betrayed partner is is not offered the tools for healing and they are quite forcefully pushed into forgiveness before they're ready. Right. And so that's one thing I really want to make a, a strong point about today is you will know when you are ready to forgive. You will have an inner knowing. You will have a sense of, okay, it is time for me to release this. Mm -hmm. Um, As long as you are engaging in healing work, because I mean, there's also the the option that you you can wallow in in anger and victimhood and resentment and all this kind of stuff, because to some extent that feels good because we have a false sense of control and power, right? right? Right. But if you're doing the healing work, there will come a time where you get to a place where you say, this isn't serving me anymore. I've processed the healthy ver- versions of anger and resentment, the, the versions that are appropriate. Now I'm getting a false sense of security from them and it's time for me to release it all together. And so you'll, you'll have a sense as long as you're going through the healing process and, and, you know, utilizing the tools and resources um, of when that is. And so the issue comes when you think, well, I just have to do it. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yeah. it's the quote unquote right thing to do. Yeah. And the reason this is an issue is because women or or betrayed people who have forgiven sooner than they were ready, or you know, I, I would I would even say it's not real forgiveness, right? right, right yeah. That um that it actually is it is damaging on a physical level. They end up having more physical symptoms and pain 
in their body and life I, I, than, than if they waited until it was appropriate yeah. and they were ready. Yeah, I, I think I think as you're as you're talking about this, I think that is not true forgiveness because I think forgiveness is given from the heart. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody tells you to forgive and then you forgive, like if you tell <laughs> Like two siblings, you know, little kids and they're arguing and you two, you, for, you forgive the other one. Like it's, they do it because you told them to, but they don't really mean it. And so I often think about, you know, in, in my life when, when maybe the light bulb has gone on and I've forgiven those that have hurt me or whatever that is, it's come at the right time mm -hmm. when I needed it After to come. you've done a lot of processing and thinking, right? right? Yeah. It's not like the moment you're hurt, you go, oh, I have to forgive. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think in the Christian community, there is this sort of belief that's, wrong mm -hmm. that is well i'm told to forgive therefore i must do it immediately and i must do it whether or not i want to and that is so damaging because it actually like physically gets stuck in your body when you're not ready and will make you sick well i also think too that that you know when you think about you know what are the reasons to forgive and these are things that once again you you decide when when you forgive but the reasons to forgive is you know, I think, uh, you know, if, if you even just look at the stress disease connection, you know, stress, uh, unforgiveness, anger, unresolved conflict, all of these things can can carry with you. So but that's no reason to rush that process. That's yeah, you, a yeah. reason to hopefully get to some point where you can forgive. And and depending on the nature of the offense or what has been done to you, it can be very, very hard. And I think that's a, a, a recognizable thing, you know, and and so I, I think I think there are people who recognize that right away and they don't want anger and, and bitterness and fear and all of those things to, to consume their lives. And then there's others that need to take some time to get there. But well, I, I think also for, think there's a sense that when you're saying some people do it right away mm -hmm. because they don't want to feel anger. I think that goes into spiritual bypassing a little it bit. It could be, yeah. Because, yeah. because I, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of people about this mm -hmm. idea and to some extent, you know, and I talk to a lot of women as they go through this process and some will say, well, I've, you know, I've offered forgiveness. I, you know, I forget, but then there's another level to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so that, that goes into the two types of forgiveness. I think that we'll talk about today, but, um, yeah, there's just a well, I think there's a head version, I think, and there's a heart version. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, when we when we talk about uh, living our best lives and living our most fulfilled lives and those sorts of things, um, you know, as you move through things and once again, you you said it best, you can't extend it too early, you can't extend it when you're ready um or before you're ready. Mm -hmm. You know, but but you know, you, invariably you will live a more fulfilled life if you let go of bitterness, anger, mm -hmm. and allow yeah, that. And but it's a process. It is a it process. has to be a process. And I think here's the key is anger and resentment have a place in the recovery process. They do. You have been justifiable, yeah. you justifiably anger, you have been wounded, you have been hurt, you have been betrayed. Those are natural emotions. They're not, you know, I think a lot of times, especially in like faith communities, you might even think, oh, well, these are sinful emotions. No emotion is sinful. It's there for a reason and it needs mm -hmm. to be validated and heard and processed. Right. So if you think, well, anger is quote unquote wrong, therefore I must forgive, but that you've never actually processed or expressed in a healthy way mm -hmm. your anger and you've never actually dealt with the anger and the hurt that you feel, right. then forgiveness kind of like anything else that you do is going to be kind of like a band-aid, right? And so versus if you have some tools and resources, express your anger in a healthy way, process the anger, process the, the resentment, get down into the deeper levels of the emotion, which, you know, a lot of times though anger and resentment are, like I mentioned earlier, those are, they feel more powerful. They feel more like we are in control when we can express those. Mm -hmm. Um versus what's typically underlying those, which is a lot of grief and sadness and pain. Right. And so being willing to go through the process of giving them their due and getting to the deeper level, because it's it's as you continue to go peel back the onion and process every layer of it, that you'll come to a point in the healing where you go, okay, it is time to forgive him. And ultimately, when you're talking about what is forgiveness, the reason you want to come to the place where you can offer it and offer it sincerely from your heart is that what you're saying when you say, I'm forgiving this person, 
is releasing the power that they have over you. And this could Mm -hmm. be for a person. It could be for an event or an experience in your life. Right. And so really it's saying, you know, this, this anger and this resentment is, is not serving me anymore Mm -hmm. or whatever emotion you're holding on to. It's not serving me anymore. And there, and in fact, maybe at the point that you're ready, it's hindering you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you go, well, I, what's actually happening is this person or this event who is no longer influenced by me in, in any way whatsoever. Mm-hmm. My, it, my thoughts don't <laughs> impact them. They don't change the behavior. They don't do anything at all. But n- what it's doing to me is it's taking all of my energy. It's taking, you know, it's draining me. It's taking all of my focus. It's in fact, hindering me from accomplishing the things that I want mm-hmm. in life. And so choosing forgiveness ultimately when you're ready is actually kind of unhooking that it's it's releasing that power it's letting go of the power or taking back your power from that event so that it mm-hmm. feels like you're being siphoned by that person yeah. or that event but that ultimately is a choice that we can say no I, I choose that no more energy goes that direction and that's ultimately what forgiveness is and all the energy goes back to you then and it it does not impact you the same way on a mental physical level anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes. Does that, I mean, yeah, no, no, I, I, I a hundred percent agree with you. I think, I think it, it, it's a, you, 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 I want to make sure I say this the right way. You should forgive for so many positive reasons, but you should only forgive when the time is right to do mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. And nobody should tell you when that time is. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, Let's talk about what forgiveness is. First, well, there's two, let's talk about two types of forgiveness. There's a type of forgiveness that you actually like would verbally extend towards the human being, right? And typically the scenarios that that's going to be appropriate is scenarios of reconciliation of some sort. You have a friend, you guys got in an argument, um, they come and apologize, you extend forgiveness, you are reconciling the relationship and everything is fine, right? Or Mm -hmm where you approach them and say, Hey, this is really bothering me. And you know, but in those types of situations, it's, it's typically, Hey, we're somehow resolving things. I extend forgiveness in order to resolve you of guilt and shame. And that way we can improve. We can move forward. Right. And so in the marriage relationship after betrayal, it's going to be very important if you reconcile that that's verbally extended and communicated Mm -hmm. um, and heartfelt. Right. Now, the other type of forgiveness is the the spiritual sense. This is like the forgiveness between like it goes from like from you and God about this event or this experience. It's a spiritual yep. understanding of forgiveness that I was talking about earlier that that actually disconnects you from that person or that event so it no longer takes your power away from you. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> Now that, so the, the forgiveness that, um, is extended towards another person, typically that is not extended when they are still actively hurting you. And that's one of the, I think, confusions sometimes in faith or Christian church is that women, like just, you know, we've given the example all the time where women go into pastoral counseling or biblical counseling or whatever, and the husband is quote unquote repentant, but hasn't actually taken any action for recovery. Still early. Right. And she's prompted to forgive him because obviously he's repenting. And so therefore, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the right thing to do. And that's just not, no, because he hasn't demonstrated that he's done hurting her. Mm-hmm. He may be apologizing, but there's, you know, it, there's actually no, there's, re- a process. there's no yeah, reconciliation right. happening at that point yet, because mm-hmm. you don't know tomorrow morning, he may do it again. Right. And right. so just to be clear there, because that's very often a situation that women find themselves in while well, I'm pressured because he apologized or whatever, that, that's, do, you know, you do not have to offer forgiveness when you are actively being hurt. That's mm-hmm. the, because if you extend that to the full, you know, extent, then you're saying, well, I have to act, I have to in the moment forgive someone that's abusing me. And that's just, yeah. when you word it that way, everybody goes, oh no, that's not right, true. Right. Well, and, and, and forgiveness is also, and, and you're going to talk about this more, is also decoupled from what you're going to do about being hurt. So you can extend forgiveness yet you can still go get a divorce. You can extend Absolutely, forgiveness yeah. 
or you can still say, I'm going to put up a boundary. Well, we, I don't want to see you. And what you're right. talking about more is the forgiveness that goes between you and God. Right. Right. right yeah. Now that you can have situations where you get divorced and it's between you and the person and the yeah, spiritual sense, right. of course, yeah. but there's any mix and match of these two. Mm-hmm. But I just, I think, you know, we always want to clarify like the, the one is not an obligation. Right. Extending forgiveness to someone that has hurt you is not the obligation. The obligation is the spiritual sense. That's really a heart change that goes through recovery and um, personal growth and spiritual growth mm-hmm. that comes when you're ready. And so some things that forgiveness is not is I think also really important to talk about because we get really hung up on, well, if I forgive them, then that must mean that I have to X, Y, Z. And then there's all this pressure on it, right? Because of these misunderstandings. And so kind of what you were just saying, forgiveness is not letting someone off the hook. Right. Right. right? Like if, 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 um, if you're moving towards reconciliation <clears throat> and th- he's demonstrating that he's sincere and he's going to therapy and he's going to group and you've offered forgiveness and all this kind of stuff. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. That doesn't mean that you don't right. have accountability. Right. That doesn't mean that you don't have conversations, right? Forgiveness is not like slate is clean. I'm going to ignore reality. Yeah. Well, I always, I always think like, this is a good example is, you know, your, your child lies to you or, or, or does something. And so you institute consequences, right? So there's consequences. Let's say they go to bed without dinner or whatever, you know, is, a, is appropriate for that. Right. And then the child comes to you and says, I'm so sorry. And you say, I forgive you Mm -hmm. because you do. You love that child Mm -hmm. and you forgive them. But the consequences are still in Mm -hmm. place. It doesn't mean you don't love the child. It also doesn't mean you don't forgive them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so I think that's a really important point because I I do think that's probably a common one that people might associate forgiveness with. Well, then it uh, kind of, again, it doesn't need to be done. It it takes my power away. Right back to where we were before. Right. It, yeah. yeah. It's like, well, it feels like, well, if I forgive you, then I don't have any, any power over mm-hmm. the situation. And I just have to go with whatever you say. Right. And there's no accountability. So that's not what that means. It also doesn't mean, you know, and this goes to the same thing we were just talking about, not holding someone accountable to the boundaries and consequences that that's mm-hmm. all kind yeah. of part and parcel of the same idea. Yeah. It Forgiveness also doesn't mean that you forget. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're not the same thing. Right. Um. You know, it, it is not this blank slate that all of a sudden you have amnesia and you that you this person has hurt you, but you're not allowed to live your life as if, you know, as if it you, did happen. It did happen. Yeah. 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 And I remember, you know, when we talked about that early on, I was like, I was like, it'd be nice if 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 she forgot, like forgave <laughs> and forgot. But I, I knew that that was not going to be the case. You know what I mean? I think I was actually kind of surprised earlier on when, when you were like, I forgive you. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I, like it didn't, well, it didn't you- necessarily mean much to me. And what I mean by that, let, let me, let me explain myself. I didn't, I didn't, it meant something to me. I'm not saying it, it didn't mean anything to me, but I didn't associate it with the forgetting thing. I was, like I said, it would have been nice to, but I was like, okay, but I've got to show you that. Yeah. I'm going to be a changed person. Yeah. You know, well, let's talk about that process for a little bit, because I did say, I forgive you like very early on, like mm-hmm. basically as you were confessing, mm-hmm. I let you know that I forgive you. Now that was very easy for me to do in a sense, because I knew on some level that you didn't, you weren't trying to hurt me. It wasn't something like you went out to hurt me. And this was against me, the way you were describing it in the moment that was very easy to forgive in the moment, the way you were describing it was this, um, this horrible thing that was happening to you that was really, really difficult. And you were in in torment Mm -hmm. and it happened to be something that, you know, hurt me. And so I was able, as you began to come, I, the words came out of my mouth very quickly. Right. The longer process of trust and deep forgiveness was obviously not within 24 hours. Oh, of course not. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like, I recognized that, that it was going to be, I didn't have this false sense that it was, you know, as much as I would like it to have been just a boop, we're moving on. Like I knew that that was not the case. Right. You know? And to that point too, forgiveness does not equal trust. Right. So I think all of these are sort of going, and it's not, and the other thing is it's not saying everything is okay. Forgiveness is not telling the person that everything. That is what okay. you did was fine. Yeah. 
So I think all of this is like, if you are going to extend it to a human being, it does not mean that you have to like, white, you know, swipe everything under the rug and act like it never happened and don't take any um, actions, you know, then it, it's not like that at all. But what it can mean for you on a spiritual level, when you get to that point, is that whether you reconcile with a person or not, that this event and this pain and this hurt that has happened is no longer taking energy from your life. Mm -hmm. And that is where I think it is um, really crucial that we work towards that point. But also that you listen to your body enough that you know when it's the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if for anyone that might be like really holding on to some of those falsely empowering emotions, um, two things. One, if you're in the first couple months, <laughs> just take that pressure off of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just take them off because everything you're feeling is normal. If you're, you know, years down the road and you're significantly through a, a, a long period of time and you're, you really find yourself holding on to some semblance of control in life or, or with these types of emotions, that is the time to start questioning, okay, what, what part is missing in my healing journey? Right. Right. Yeah. It's an internal look versus an external look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the important part. It's kind of like you just said, um, internal look versus an external look. And it reminded me of, this is on topic, but off topic, the idea of happiness. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a quote that I just posted in um, the recovery you face. I sent group. it to you. Did you send that to me? I did. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think they just sometimes grab random actors and put them on there yeah, to make it sound like they said it. But, what it was actually from, but it says, Beware of destination addiction. The idea that happiness is in the next place, the next job, or even with the next partner. Until you give up the idea that happiness is somewhere else, it will never be where you are. So there's a couple things with that. Beware of the destination addiction. The idea that happiness is in the next place. I would also say, beware of the idea that happiness is in your sense of control or your sense of anger or your sense of vindictiveness or you know whatever it might be because those are really easy emotions to hold on to for a really long time and it's only at the point that we realize that you know if we've held on to these for a significant period of time past the event past the experience and and we use them to exert some sort of power like i'm going to lash out at so and so and i'm going to hold this over their head and that sort of if we use them for some sort of power or control, then it, it, that is only being toxic to yourself. Right. And it's only being harmful to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, but we can associate, well, I'll be happy if, you know, this, I'll be happy if that. And if our idea of happiness is so dependent on things that are external to us, a job or a person or whatever, we'll actually never, ever achieve it. Right. So it's the idea really of, gratefulness in every experience and the idea of choice that we can always make different choices at any time, right? Mm -hmm. All kind of combined. And that was another thing I was talking to my clients a lot about this week is the idea that not every single choice has morality associated with it. Cause we're talking about forgiveness is so deeply rooted in the sense of morality as well. Right. And so when you have people that really, 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 really want to do the right thing, I get so frustrated sometimes at how these human um, interpretations or, uh, human and cultural. It's like, it's like, tell it's like the game of telephone with the Bible. Mm -hmm. We end up interpreting things in a certain way. And by the time we get to the end of the game, it's actually toxic. It's not the original intent at all. Mm -hmm. And so you see that with forgiveness, right? G God's intent is that you live in, in this state of communion with him and joy and love for him and other people. And that, that is a place of healing and lightness and goodness and kindness, right. And, and purity. And then we take it as humans and we go kind of old Testament misinterpretations, right? We go law, 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 action, 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 action. You have to do these things and it becomes a burden instead of freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see happening with forgiveness. And that hurts people physically and mentally and emotionally hurts people. Yeah. And you see the same thing with behavior. So 
we have morality to free us, right? Like we tell kids don't cross the street without a parent because we're protecting them, right? From the cars and the traffic, Mm -hmm. you know, you say um, you you put boundaries up around different things in life um, to protect you from going too far or for doing, from doing things, you know, you, you keep a budget because you don't want to get in debt. You know, you just do all these, you have boundaries in life, guidelines in life, so that you can live a lighter, freer, happier life, right? right. Th- those are good things. And so you see the same thing with um, with our choices. We want to be good people and we want to follow the rules. And so then we think that we, we incorrectly through the game of telephone and through our own human interpretation of things go, well, every single choice I ever make has a right or wrong to it. There's a morality associated to every single choice that I make. And that's just not true. Mm-hmm. There's... You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't kill kill people. There are choices in life that obviously have morality associated to them. But we make choices every day that have no morality associated to them. I'm going to wear a blue shirt today. I'm going to wear a red shirt today. Uh, You know, I'm exercise or not to exercise. There's no morality associated with that. So I think part of what happens with when we try to do the right thing all the time is we over moralize our thinking and we over moralize our decision making, and then we feel stuck. Mm-hmm. Well, what if I get divorced and, and I, that is the wrong decision for me? That's a mistake. Like there's some, there's badness associated with the wrong choice, right? Mm-hmm. Versus um, viewing, and I mean, you could go the other way. What if I stay married and it's the wrong, right? There is, um, there are so many things in life that are just choices. And I think that's, you know, I've been talking to a lot of clients about this because I, as someone <laughs> that wants to do the right thing, this was kind of a revelation of sorts to me mm-hmm. to take the pressure off of that. Because yeah. if you think there are lots of choices, many of which are quote unquote right, and many of which maybe aren't, you have you have several options in the right. It's not just one. There's lots of, of good possibilities. And so then you, instead of looking at it as right or wrong, you just look at choices as experiments or possibilities in life, mm-hmm. and of which there are many So then you can choose one road and here's where people get caught up. Well, if I choose this road and let's say five years later, I've made this choice and five years later, I'm now thinking, well, maybe this wasn't a good choice. Then you'll go and you'll guilt yourself, yourself, you'll shame yourself and you'll say, well, that was the wrong choice. I made the wrong decision. That was bad, right? And you're just heaping shame on yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not taking into account the fact that you live in a world full of millions of other humans, billions of other humans. Mm -hmm. And who are all also making choices. And now five years later, maybe it wasn't actually your choice being wrong. Maybe it's just that your environment has changed. Well, you've learned. We're all learning human, you know, creatures. We we hopefully that's why, you know, grandparents are, are a little bit less bothered by little kids than parents are. Yeah. Because you learn, you understand that that particular moment is not going to be the end. You know, it's not going to turn them into a serial killer, right? You know, they're actually going to be okay. And so I think I think there is a notion of growing and learning into that. And so I think you're right if you turn everything into a right or wrong decision. I went to the wrong college. I went to well, no, you 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 learn something there. You actually learn. So so you know, let's let's move on. It, well, it's yeah, it's not even that. It's I mean, it's not even just moving on. It's that wasn't even necessarily a wrong choice. Mm -hmm. You made a choice with the information that you had at the moment. You thought it was a good choice in the moment. probably was a good choice in the moment. Now, maybe like you're saying, the environment has changed or you've learned more or something has changed in your life or someone else made a choice that impacts you now. And you go, that's, that's no longer the choice I want in this moment. And therefore I'm Mm -hmm. going to, from this point, make a different choice. So that's not wrong. But I know it's no longer serving me, so I'm going to do something different, right? Mm-hmm. To me, the idea that idea is so freeing because it goes, well, what do I just with the information I have right now in this moment? What choice do I make? Right. And then you just make the best decision you can, and every day you go, I I made the best decision that I can. I'll change it if more information comes later, mm-hmm. right? And there's no quote unquote right or wrong with that. And so I think you can apply that to a lot of things in life. And as you're going through betrayal i see a lot of women agonizing over the decision of staying with their partner or not and i always try to encourage them to just take the pressure off Mm -hmm. just take the pressure off because the the generalized wisdom of of um uh, this arena is if you have a hope of reconciliation to sit back for about a year and let things unfold Mm -hmm. right so no pressure to make any decisions there right 
And so you just, you, you are doing your best with every moment to work on your own recovery. Hopefully your spouse is doing their very best to work towards addiction recovery. Mm -hmm. You're working your best in, in the relationship to support each other and to communicate and to see, okay, where is this going to go? But at the end of the day, there's no choice to be made because not enough time has passed. Right. And so then, okay, you get to a year and then all of a sudden, uh oh, I feel pressure because everybody has told me I should wait at least a year. Well, now I have to make a choice. Guess what? No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and I, it's just, we, it's not, there is not a right or wrong in here. There is no timeline. Everybody's different. Everybody's life is different. And so every day you're making little choices that don't have morality associated with them. Of course, you're making those within your general sense of morality, right? But I just with that particular situation, take the pressure off. And it's the same with forgiveness, right? Take the pressure off. Right. Because ultimately in your relationship, there will come a time where you have an inner knowing and you can trust yourself if you if you go through the healing process and kind of learn how to drop back into your body and listen to that. You know the truth. You know what is right. You know what your relationship is. And if there are things inside of you saying, you know, I shouldn't trust this person, you'll know that. Mm -hmm. Conversely, if you have this inner knowing that says, okay, I can really trust him. Like, you know, our relationship is a great example. I, I always said, as we were going through this divorce, we'll always be on the table. When, you know, once once this has happened, it, it will never be off the table, right? It's just a, a, the new reality, right? And even while I was struggling with, with, can I handle this? Can I personally recover? Can I get to a place where I'm happy? My inner knowing always told me that you were being sincere. Mm -hmm. So even when I had um, brain doubts, right? When I yeah. had my, my conscious mind was thinking, okay, well, can I trust him? There, I was able to lean kind of on that inner knowing to a to a, to a point, mm -hmm. To some extent, there I asked a lot of questions in those yeah. times of insecurity, I'm sure. But also there was like a point to why I stayed because I knew there was a part of me that really deeply believed that you were sincere. And so I encourage people, you know, take the pressure of decision making off and try to listen to that inner knowing because it exists, it is there, it is for you. Mm -hmm. And it 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 is going to point you in the direction of truth. So you can apply that to staying or leaving. You can apply that to the timing of your forgiveness. Um, you can, you know, any of those choices that you have to make in life. I think that applies overarchingly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, I think you have to, with everything, you just have to find a way to listen to the situation around you and what your, what your body is telling you mm -hmm. a thousand percent. Have you ever had um, an experience where maybe your body was communicating one thing, but maybe your brain was feeling anxious or thinking about things differently? Or like, have you had experiences where, maybe not that specific, but have you had experiences where your body just told you? Yeah, I actually, so I, I uh, the company I work for now, I've, I've worked for them for 22 years and and the gentleman who hired me, I won't say his name, but the gentleman who hired me way back when um, was a mentor to me, was a friend to me, um, stood by me through some really difficult times. And, and I, I mean, I'll just to be candid, I think our relationship soured towards the latter. He's retired now, but our relationship kind of soured towards the end. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter about intent, but I perceived, you know, some of the things that were done as very harmful and very hurtful. And, and so I, I, um, probably didn't handle it the best way, but I would push back and I would do a lot of different things. And, and I had responsibilities taken away, um, because he was a boss and, and that sort of thing. And so for the longest time, I was kind of bitter about it and, and really tried to process through it. But, you know, oddly enough, post recovery for me, um, is one, one day this year I was down on the, uh, on the treadmill or one day. Yeah. One day I was down on the treadmill and, and, uh, I, I believe the Holy Spirit just said, you've got to, you've got to forgive him. And, you know, he no longer works for the company. It just, like, I don't, came up yeah, it just came up and I don't, I don't talk to him anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that was just an internal prompting yeah. that, well, you I mean, know, that's a great example of both the internal prompting the spiritual growth and the recovery work that led to that internal prompting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the timing of like, okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And 
just as an example, you never went to him and said face to face, "Oh, I forgive you." That, right. It's just, right. Not that's not always appropriate in every situation. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so you don't. I think I don't know. I I think it, as humans, we have all of these like rules and regulations about what this means and mm-hmm. what we're required to do. Right? right. And I think a lot of them are just that they're human like ideas. They're not like. They're not from God. They're not from the Bible. They're not requirements, right? They're um, the idea of forgiveness is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but getting there in the appropriate time. Yeah, yeah. And so it was actually. I remember feeling very freed by it. Mm-hmm. And so, and that was just for me. That was just a hundred percent for me. It had nothing to do with my interaction with him. It didn't change my, and it probably did change me a little bit. You know what I mean? Because I had I, I let that part of my life's hurt go. Mm. And so that was important to me to kind of say, hey, I, I I needed and I think something, you know, something in me knew that. And that 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 was re- really powerful for me. What about the idea of forgiving yourself? Oh wow. Yeah, for the yeah, th- this is interesting. And I'm I'm glad you you asked that question. So for the longest time, um, and we've talked about this on the podcast, is I I was like I know she wants to stay together, but she's just going to be better off without me. So I'll go through the process, right? I will work hard and I will, you know, see if we can, you know, fix that. But it's just, this is a fool. This is almost a fool's game, right? You know, she's better off without me. And that was born out of two things, I think. Two things, you know, the number one thing is I genuinely was trying to be kind and, you know, knew how much I had hurt you. The second thing was I had a low, low uh, opinion of myself. And so, um, you know, that's been somewhat of a journey as well. And as I've, as I've worked on you know, reducing the shame in my life and starting to rec- I mean, there for, <laughs> there for a long time, I, I would go back like decades and be like, Oh, that man, I was a horrible army officer and I was a horrible father. And like, no, I'm actually a good father and I was a great army officer and I'm a good boss. Was the same thing that the betrayed spouses grapple with. And that is the cloud that addiction pl- like mm-hmm. held over right, all of those right. experiences in your life. And that is true. Like it did cloud mm-hmm. and cover perspective, but it didn't mean that everything you did in those right. moments was yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah. And so like, you know, a couple of things that have come up recently is like, I'll tell you at times I'm a catch and then I, I'll call myself your trophy husband. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it sounds silly, right? But it's an important thing because it's not, you know, I can talk down to myself all the time and my body will listen, but it's not, an, I'm not doing it from a sense of arrogance or whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's like, it's like you need to speak to yourself in a positive way. And so I think that was a big part because I, you know, six months a year, I couldn't have done that. And so I think I've, I've worked very hard to, to, to extend forgiveness to myself and, and kind of carry that. You may not think I'm a trophy husband. But um, My version of that is when you when you compliment me two years ago, I was basically like, ugh. And then now you go, hey, you look really pretty today. I'm like, I know, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly. So yeah, it just you know, I think it's one of those things that was just really, really important for me to to you know to to get to that point where I felt comfortable and not like a fraud to say mm. call myself a trophy husband. You know, well, and the idea of self forgiveness, I think, is something that most of us don't even think about. Right. Mm-hmm. When we think about forgiveness, we often think about it being extended to other people. Right. And the reality is that we are usually more unkind to ourselves than we ever are to anybody else. That's right. Yeah. And over things that we don't, we don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. We, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I've, I, this week I've been doing this, um, offering this meditation to different people and I'm going to record it. Uh, as a bonus to this episode, because I just think it's, I think it's a really powerful um, meditation. But what I have been leading people through is this uh, energy is a forgiveness and energetic cord cutting meditation. And it's really cool because you have the opportunity to get out anything that is still residual towards the person or event. So any thoughts or emotions that are still lingering, you just get that out. You then have the opportunity to offer forgiveness to yourself. So maybe if there's something you've been holding on to and it's like three years too long and you should, you know, you can, or you just, you know, felt a lot of guilt or whatever it is, you you have the opportunity to offer yourself forgiveness in that moment. Once you've done that, then I walk you through offering, ex, uh, extending forgiveness to the event or the person that mm-hmm. you've been holding on to. And then we actually completely cut the energetic ties to that event or the, and it's so powerful because when, when I walk people through this, 
you know, I kind of, will, I will ask them, right. How is this for you? And the, Oh, that's so powerful. And like, how is it when we did the cord cutting and they'll say things like, Oh yeah, the whoosh that you kind of described, that's what it feels like. It's like this energy, this power is like coming back into my body. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's really, really cool. And, um, so I will record that as a bonus episode because I think, you know, if you are somebody that's listening to this and you're like, well, how do I do it? Right. There's, there's actually a really cool, um, process that I can take you through. But the first thing is knowing that you're ready, not forcing it. The second thing is it is a choice. Mm -hmm. So when you say, well, how do I do it? Like it's, it's a choice that comes when you are ready. So if you're feeling during this episode, like I want to do that. Cool. Go to the next little bonus episode because we're going to release them at the same time. And um, I will have that recorded for you. And it's around 10 minutes. It's really short. Mm-hmm. Don't do it in the car. <laughs> do, it, do it in your house and in, in a safe space where it can be quiet and focused for about 10 minutes. Um, and I'm really excited to offer that because it's just been getting a really positive response. And I just think it's a really, um, you know, it's one thing to like know how to do something. But personally, I can't just, a lot of, a lot of people that went through like the trainings and stuff with me, they can do emotional processing and QTT and stuff in their heads. I like to be guided. I like to work with a practitioner who walks me through it step by step, even though I know all the steps. <laughs> That's just like, it's it's too complicated for my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, I, or maybe I'm too ADD, right? I'd start it and then I'd be like, blah, 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 something else, squirrel. Yeah. So I like, you know, having things like this where it's structured and you can be taken through it. So I'm going to offer that to everybody. And if you're feeling like now is the time, feel free to uh, use that meditation because I think it'll be really helpful and empowering to you to make the choice to take something from your past and no longer allow it to take your energy and take your power from you. And and going through this process can really just in in the meditation, you can really physically feel all that energy coming back into your body. And it's a really cool thing. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this podcast interesting or helpful, it would mean so much if you leave a five-star review or post a screenshot and share on social media. We are on a mission to share the message of recovery and you can help get the word out. If you know a friend who could use this podcast, please share it.